Okay, we have a plan for the exhaust system. So what I'm gonna do is cut a cavity just inside here, right up at the top of the oven because hot air rises. So I'm gonna either blow or extract from that point. And then I'm going to 3D print kind of like a tunnel that'll be sitting here and it'll go underneath the elements across to this back section here. I'm gonna cut away this back section and the fan itself is going to sit at the back just there. Whether it's gonna be blowing or sucking yet is undecided, but either way, it'll be either pulling air out from here or pushing air in through this cavity into the oven. Now I'm gonna be 3D printing the part out of PLA. Before everyone freaks out, PLA's got a melting point at about 215 degrees. That's what my printer prints it at. I've done tests on the oven where even after three reflows, the ambient temperature inside this cavity here, just using a K-type probe sticking in the bottom, didn't get above 33 degrees. So the only part that gets hot is the metal surfaces, and they get super hot. So what I've done is I've bought some special rubber that's called Viton, which is a heat retarding rubber. It basically shields heat, won't let heat through. And I'm gonna cut some Viton out that'll sit in between this wall and the PLA, and over here in between the wall and the PLA, and on the outside in between the wall and the motor. So both the motor and the PLA are insulated from the actual metal surfaces. So this is the 3D object. Um, I'm currently printing it standing up like that with a whole lot of supports. We'll see how that goes. It's got about a, a nine hour print time ahead of me. I'll just show you the sketch objects that I'm using. So this is the sketch object that will be laser cutting the Viton at the fan end. So there'll be two of these, one on the inside and one on the outside of the back of the oven. And I've also got the version here for the oven. So that's sitting on the inside oven wall. That doesn't have to be a circle. It's a square that's going into that side. It's much easier to cut a square out of the side of the oven. So that'll just be the one piece, three millimeters thick, that'll go between the oven wall and the 3D print. This is called Viton. This particular A4 sheet cost me $40. It's three millimeters thick, and it's a very thick, durable rubber. The idea behind it is it's supposed to be quite heat resistant. So with the oven wall on one side and the PLA or the fan on the other side, virtually no, or hopefully no, heat will transfer between it. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to laser cut it. I'm sure whatever happens is gonna absolutely stink, but let's give it a shot. Seriously, that was the most ridiculous thing ever. I just put heat resistant rubber in my laser cutter and tried cutting it. <laughs> Man, it's just disintegrated. Six passes. You just watched, right? That was sped up. Six passes and I couldn't cut through it and it disintegrated it and it left debris everywhere in my laser cutter. And then I took a knife to it and I can just cut it with a knife. It just cuts with a knife. What much fun a laser cutter. Ah. Good morning folks, it's uh, day two of my let's destroy my toaster oven video. I'm just going to uh, go to my office and uh, check out my 3D print which I let run all night last night. Let's see if it finished. Whoa, there it is. Right. There. Let's check it out. Okay, I'm hoping this will pop right off. 
Okay, here it is. That uh, came out pretty good, I have to say. It's all the support material. This is the first time I printed on my Mark III with support. As you can see, it's kind of full of it, but I'm hoping that it'll just come out really easily. I've got my pliers here just in case it doesn't, but I'm hoping it'll just break off. So let's find out. Wow. <laughs> okay. That is pretty cool. Let's find out that inside. I'm hoping it'll just eventually pull out. Oh, there it is. Wow. Holy moly. So my previous printer, this would have been, been completely fused inside the printer. There's no way it would have come out. You can just see how thin that is. That is just amazing. And we're left with a perfectly printed piece. That is super cool. I wonder if it's gonna fit inside the oven. Let's find out. Let's see if this fits, shall we? Careful not to pull the cable. Oh, look at that. That's exactly where it's supposed to go. It's gonna sit on the side just here. See the little mark I've got there? The screw in about there. And sits on the back. Fan on the side. Perfect fit. This is the aftermath of my laser cutting attempt. I managed to cut out with a Stanley knife, the circle and the squares. As you can see, there's still debris coming off it and my fingers are getting black just by touching it all. I figured I could drill the holes out and I could potentially use these. But what's actually happened is the laser cutter, as it cuts through, again and again in each pass I was doing was wearing down the sides of it. Let's see if I get on an angle where you can kind of see. And so it, they're tapered now. So effectively lost in terms of the sides, a bunch of the thickness. Now it still might be fine. Insulation wise it still might work. But I'm going to have a go at using what I've got left. Which is, you know, I've got stacks left, that's fine. I'm gonna have a go at tracing out what the shape's gonna be and just cutting it with a knife. I've cut a piece off from the opposite side of the sheet that didn't go through the laser cutter process. So it's got less debris on it, which is great because the other side is still disintegrating. I've cut it at exactly 70 millimeters across because that's the size of this piece here. So that's one piece that's gonna go just like that, but with the square cut out, and I'll have to do the holes. Can I see that? Yep. Perfect. Okay, I didn't want to bore you with most of the cutting. I've done the drilling, and I've got a, you might be able to see there's some markings on there for where I need to cut the inside out. I just cut two of these together, laid them on top, so I've only marked out one. And as you can see, that works quite well with the holes. And this one here, the holes, great fit. So I just need to finish this off. Okay, pretty good. Perfect. So as I said, it'll be one side, then the oven wall, then that, and then the fan. So both are insulated from the heat of the oven wall. Before we start cutting, we need to just mark out where the cut knife's gonna be.
Okay folks, we're going to do a test. I've got everything plugged in. I've got the fan on the side. The fan is set to go off when it hits the top of the highest temperature just before it starts to fall. Let's see what happens. It's gonna be interesting to see two things. The first is that the fan is gonna be blowing, not sucking, but I have no idea where the hot air inside the oven is gonna to move to when the cold air comes in or colder air comes in. The other thing will be how well the graph actually matches now that there's an outlet for the heat to come out the side of the oven. So far so good. I can actually feel heat coming out the back of the fan through the hole, so there's definitely some heat escaping. At some point I'll have to put a temperature probe inside there and check that the heat's not going to get too hot for the PLA. For my case I think it'll be fine because we're going to 140 or up to 160, 170 degrees. PLA is getting a little warm to the touch. Not hot, but um, there's more heat escaping out the back than I was hoping for. But I might have to switch out the PLA for maybe a metal constructed tube or something. So far so good. At 240 second mark, the fan is going to kick in. Just any moment now. Okay, you heard the beep. It says open oven. It's not actually supposed to be open oven right now. And you can see the air coming in and the temperature is dropping beautifully. The rate of drop will actually ease off. The oven's actually off now. So I've not opened the oven door at all. and I'm just blowing air in. So as you can see, it's about done as much as it can do. I'm gonna let it keep going till the end of the graph. Normally I would have had the door open by now. And I'm just opening the door to let the rest of the heat out. That was better than I could have actually hoped for. Wow, what a crazy two days. The jury's out whether it was worth it or not yet, but I have a toaster oven that's complete. I just need to put the cover on. I did do some tests with the K-type thermocouple at the back through the fan, and I did a reflow, and the temperature never got above 68 degrees with the, the probe sitting about this far in. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know how durable it's gonna be. I know people are still gonna be freaking out that I used PLA inside here, but that's okay, that's all I had on me at the time. Yeah, so. Do I recommend doing this to other people? No. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Just go out and buy a, a reflower or a, a Chinese reflow thing or just do it manually like I was doing it before. This whole process has been just a massive undertaking. Uh, I've learned a lot. I'm super glad that I've got a controller working and I am going to do the PCBs and, and actually build a finished unit. I'm not going to let all this go to waste. But uh, do I recommend it for everyone else? No. Okay, folks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Check out my stuff on Tindy. And please subscribe and click the alarm bell so you know when I've got new videos coming out. Until next time, bye.